It's not going to be just a wonderful series of paintings that we're going to be seeing things that will probably really surprise us. People don't really understand how the farm world really works. Connecting people to the land through art, I think that's a beautiful mission. I love the title using the word Ballad of the Farm. Part of this is a hope to uh, allow people to get in contact with what the past has been, what really happens in farming, and as the name of the project implies, even what might be coming in the future. shared with the Bone Creek Museum was a picture of my great-grandfather's family and it was taken in Knuckles counties probably in the late 1800s sometime. So many of those, these photos are so powerful. The one that I chose, the family portrait, it sort of contains a whole world just within this one photo. There's such a variety of facial expressions and personality types within this family and they look related to each other, clearly, some of them, but, um, but they all look different. I thought there was a lot to work with just in that one photograph. The photograph showed many things, many things, always outdoors. And not so many women as men. And so I was thinking about the women's story and what is missing. And what was missing to me was what happens inside the house. A picture can just spark a memory. The woman in the photograph is my great-grandmother, Louise Borzik was her name. She and her husband lived on the farm and they raised the turkeys there. The photograph was taken around 1940, the early 1940s, uh, before my grandmother was even born. It is my great-grandma, Martha Julia Jelinek Sahanik, and I'm guessing it was probably taken in the early 1940s. I'm from the farm, but yet I've lived in the metro area for so long that I had forgotten. Well, farming uh, uh, feeds the world, which is kind of a cliche, but it's true. And uh, uh, a lot of people in town don't realize this anymore. They have all the food they want in the grocery stores, and so they don't think anything about uh, where it comes from. And they don't have to because it's always there. It's hard work. It's getting up at like four o'clock in the morning and going to bed at 10 at night after like going and being in the field for so long. And I think that's just, it's really interesting. And I don't think a lot of people know how much work go into it, at least not the city people. <laughs> and so our job is how do we get that message across to a population that really doesn't care? <laughs> We're used to hearing other people's opinions, and I think art is the best place to have a discussion. And all of these things that we hope to do to get better, to, to uh, fix things that might have become a problem, have to begin with a discussion. And art's a great place to start that. To express the artistic vision in relation to the agrarian world, it can be quite a challenge still have a pretty picture maybe with a little deeper meaning and that was a challenge. I think art is a good medium because um, agrarian life and the values that come with it are right up there with the sense of the sacred. You know there, there's a sacredness about it the same as with art. 
The one big thing is if you have access to the land like this, you get to see the seasons change. You get to see nature. And so here you get to see the land as it extends. The horizon is forever and you get to see the real world as it happens. I guess growing up um, on the plains and in a really rural um, place instilled in me a real love of land and of open spaces. I think it's important to uh, for the younger generation to see you know all those values you know hard work and uh, perseverance. I don't think you get those same values and I don't think you can instill those same values in your kids by having them work retail for instance in high school. I don't think it's possible. I think they need to be out sweating and hooking beans to get the same values. I think all those things uh, help build character, you know, in in you. I grew up on the farm, and it was just uh, knew that that's what I was going to do when I uh, got older. I always told him when I was a kid, my folks always asked me what I want to do, and I said I'm going to marry a farmer. <laughs> so I did. <laughs> I was raised in town, but obviously farming has been a big part of my life. Uh, my first exposure was with great-grandma and grandpa, and uh, I have lived on a farm now more years than I have ever lived in a town. When we moved to our eight acres about eight years ago, um, we, my husband and I became increasingly aware of, of cycles of nature, of how the land changed through the seasons. You know, a, a great thing about rural areas is that they act as sort of repositories for traditions. My grandparents had heard that there was land and homesteading of possibilities in Nebraska, and so they found out about this place, and they finished proving up the homestead, and this was in 1871, and then from there on, it's been in the family ever since. I'm also the fifth generation. Our, our farm was homesteaded in 18, about 1845. So I have a lot of feelings and responsibility to that of, you know, maintaining uh, the place and, and giving it off in better condition to my son or to, you know, whatever landowner is going to maybe possibly have it in the future. You know, remembering where we came from and, and, uh, and the fact that we we're fortunate enough to have now several generations that have lived and, and, and been able to benefit from the land here that, uh, you know, why did our forefathers pick this spot to be able to preserve that and, and to be able to, you know, live on and operate the same farm and then, you know, and look to the future. I think farming is, for a lot of, uh, a lot of farmers, is a vocation, you know, they see it as uh, I mean, yes, it's a means to provide for your family, um, but I really think they see a, a, another purpose, you know, in in providing for for their neighbor and for you know the people of the community around them. I believe the photo was taken in the early 1900s. It was a um, picture that had my grandfather and two of my uncles on, and it's a thrashing crew, and it w was taken probably just west of Brainerd on our family farm, and um, they must have been taking a break or finished for the day, and um, they always thrashed, and there was always a great meal served at these things, and uh, that was a photo that I found in my parents' stock of photos. Uh, the reason the ladies were all together was to prepare a lot of food that day. My father had been injured on the farm. He was really not able to do much work for several months, I believe. A huge group of men, I think there were between 50 and 60 men there. Probably they brought in at least 25 machines to harvest the crop that year. I mean, we used to raise chickens, and then, um, you know, twice a year, 20 to 30 people, we would all get together and we would clean the chickens together. And that was a huge event, and then you'd div divvy up all the chickens, and we used to 
pick corn that way and uh, shell popcorn and it was you know it, they were big tasks but doing it within a group it wasn't as difficult and it was a lot of fun. The kind of moment for me was the combination of seeing those photographs of um, you know the, these big crews working on harvest and you know wow I mean wouldn't it be great if you know it wasn't just me and my son. You know one farmer can farm more and more land and it's uh, so you're finding that less and less people have to live in those spaces in order to do this sort of work. Farming has really changed from the beginning. Uh, Dad had horses when, uh, when I can remember earliest on and uh, things are progressing now. One of the interesting stories I read about technology and farming related to dairy farms and how um, dairy farms have systems where cows can be barcoded and so the cow can decide when she's going to be milked. It's so impressive that you can drive a tractor within an inch or two being guided by satellites today. Technology is wonderful but when it is taken just for the sake of being faster and bigger and, and better, it's not always better in my opinion. I really don't think that technology is necessarily a bad thing. I think there might be some insecurity because we don't understand the technology or the science behind it. And I think that as it becomes more common, people will become more comfortable. And I think in the end that it'll actually be a really good thing. My concern is that with the farming technology changing, that uh, farms may become even bigger and our rural population continue to decline. And then this puts real pressure on these small communities. And how are they going to survive? I don't know that farming was ever simplistic, but it seemed like it was a calmer way to live years ago. Thinking about farming in the future, it frightens me in a way. I'm concerned about the young people, that they can't afford. Farms are combining and getting too big, and what's going to happen someday? I agree with Mom um, that it's challenging for young people if they aren't going to inherit a family farm. Equipment is so expensive, and land is expensive. I don't know how anybody could start out. For my own family, there are changes coming. You know, this is a multi-generational farm and it was a it was a homestead and it's been passed down, but the future is not that clear. You know, I don't I don't know if there's a farmer in the next generation who's going to take it over. For my involvement, our family involvement after my generation, that's the end of it because none of the succeeding generation has any interest in the farm or is even uh, close by enough to even know about the farm. Being that my son's our only child right now, I have um, tremendous concerns about how I'm going to leave that for him and what challenges he's going to face. I'm a real optimist about that. I see mainly probably because I teach uh, high school kids and um, they are fearless. They, they don't sit around and mope, they don't get nostalgic. They see what they're going to do about it. My take is that Industrial scale farming is at its breaking point. You know, and corporate farms are getting bigger and bigger, but then there's the, you know, the food, the local food movement that's kind of in opposition to that a little bit politically. I think that a lot of the people my age, as we grow up, we know um, we have to treat ourselves better, and because of that, um, what we put in front of us when we eat is going to change a lot more. They are going to return to uh, working smaller scale farms, thinking more locally. So rather than sustaining a country, they're thinking about sustaining a community. There's going to be some struggle and some difficulty, but I hope that something positive will come from that. Artwork has a way of speaking to each of us individually. 
I think there's a lot of power in that. Art is just another form of communication. It's a visual communication, and I think it's something that we all enjoy, and I think there's sometimes a disparity between um, cultural life of cities and agrarian lives and rural societies, and I, I think art helps bring those two together. And art is good at raising questions in general, and um, I think this is a, it's a great time to be questioning the way we farm. When you appeal to people in a different way, um, through art and you ask them to engage emotionally with agriculture, um, you're asking them to do something really different. This experience has changed my idea about farming, rural life, agricultural communities. It really expands and broadens my mind of the issues and concerns that are involved in that life. The honeycomb and the bees have been in my work for a long time and when I went back to that original aerial view of the farm that I chose early on, there are two structures on that farm that are hexagonal in shape. And so I immediately recognized that when I abstracted it as, as the shape of honeycomb. So it, it seemed like this serendipitous moment where I could insert the bees into the painting and have them be present because they are so important to um, agriculture, whether that's a small scale farm or a backyard garden or the scale of an industrial farm. It, bees matter, and I think it's an important point for me to make in this painting. Artists in general can make work that people can connect to on an emotional level, you know, on a real gut level. Well, it made me sort of realize again how important I thought farming was. I really enjoyed communicating with the lenders because they all spoke of values and, and it, remembering their experiences really fondly, though they all worked really hard. When I started talking to my grandma about these photographs, that process really allowed my grandma and I to become closer, to share more with each other because you know, of that one picture or the few pictures that we looked at. It was nice to be able to get to know her and her history better and as well as my own history through her. Looking at the photographs and looking at the people represented, I was thinking about what would they say to us as present day viewers? I don't know, there was a specific sort of, this is a corny word, but communion with the canvas and with what I was learning from the, the lenders and with what I knew of my own background. It's been nice to have this process and being accountable to another group, a fellow group of artists who are all in this together creating this work and it's exciting. I think I'm at a new point in my work. I think this, I think this this series of paintings I've done for this show, I think, has, has sort of turned a new page for me. I got a lot of inspiration from the photographs, a lot of feedback from the lenders, and there was an ongoing dialogue with the curator, James, as well. That brings it full circle where the idea of a piece is not just what you do, but it's the exhibition and the content of the exhibition and the theme of the exhibition and how all the pieces come together to create something that's really unique.